Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. So with me today is Chella. She is my coach, Chella, right? Yes. And she is with a company called All's Notes, and we are going to talk about Alzheimer's and cannabis today. So thanks for being with me today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I am very much holistic. I am not a super huge fan of pharmaceuticals, but I am aware that they are sometimes necessary. So I'm very interested in learning more about this because I don't think you get too much more natural than a plant. Correct. So tell me, tell me all about your studies and research and all that good stuff. Fill us in. Absolutely. Um, So my mom uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2010. Uh, my mom had been a, um, regular consumer of medical cannabis, like a couple of puffs at night to help her with gallstone pain Mm. most of my life. And so most of my life I've sort of understood cannabis as medicine. Uh, when she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, however, the doctor said very emphatically, Oh no, she can't have marijuana. It's bad for her memory. (laughs) And I said to him, the only thing I know about Alzheimer's disease is that it's bad for your memory. That was the only thing I knew at the time. So he said, yeah, well, she can't have it. And he proceeded to prescribe her all of the black box drugs that are so commonly prescribed for people living with dementia, an antipsychotic, an anti-seizure, an antidepressant, uh, an anti-anxiety, all of which are off-label and black box for people living with dementia. So, um, although I, um, although I went along with what they said at the beginning, um, we noticed that they didn't really work very well. They seemed to sort of increase her symptoms, but we weren't sure if that was the disease process or if it was side effects from the medication. It was after she was on all five of those meds at their prescribed dosage that she fell five times in three weeks. Oh, yikes. And then she wouldn't get out of bed. So there was something she remembered is that she falls. So she wouldn't get out of bed for three more weeks. And I took family leave. The doctor said she could be having failure to thrive and this could be it. So I'm like, oh, God. So while we, I was on family leave, I was researching drug interactions uh, with cannabis, her prescribed medication with cannabis, because, and I also changed her doctor. So while she was um, in bed for the three weeks, I was doing this research, and she says to me, hey, I want a hit of a joint. <laughs> And so I called her new doctor and I told her what was going on. And she said, Chella, she hasn't gotten out of bed in three weeks. Give her whatever she wants. So we smoked a joint together. And then my mom says, hey, let's go watch TV in the living room. So we went out to the living room for the first time. She left her room in in three weeks. And I went, okay, this is obviously the right medicine for my mom. I went down to my local dispensary in West Hollywood, which we were so lucky because it was one of the real, true, first early medical dispensaries called The Pharmacy. Um, And they had this big bottle of olive oil that was infused with cannabis. Uh, Now the regulations say what you have to know what's in everything and all these good things, which is great. But at the time... There were no regulations, and I had no idea how much medicine was in this big bottle of olive oil. I get my olive oil, I truck it home, and I make my mom a coconut milk-based protein shake, which had done wonders for her, but not enough for her anxiety. So I looked at this bottle of olive oil, I looked at her shake, and I threw a tablespoon of this olive oil into her delicious shake, which was no longer delicious. It was horrifying. (laughs) I tasted it. I'm like, oh, there's no way this is going to work. I brought it to my mom in the living room. I set it down in front of her just like nothing had changed. I walked away. She drank the whole thing, no problem. (laughs) Your taste buds change. Everything changes when you have brain change, as you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So... She took her first dose, and um, she was 
just steady and just happy the rest of the afternoon. And it lasted like several hours. Um, and that's when we knew we were onto something. So I kept giving her a tablespoon in her shake and sometimes it was a little too much. And so she got sleepy, but you know what? People living with dementia sleep a lot during the day anyway. So it wasn't like that side effect was a problem. It wasn't organ failure. It wasn't sudden death, <laughs> which was the side effect profile for all the other meds that people are prescribed when they have dementia and they have aggression or agitation. They're prescribed these very strong drugs that are off label. And yet that's the standard of care now. And in 33 of the 36 medical cannabis states, cannabis is on, uh, sorry, Alzheimer's is on the list of medical cannabis approved maladies, um, the qualifying conditions list. Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative disease is on 33 of the 36 states that allow medical cannabis. Interesting. Yeah. I find it interesting. I think because my mom was officially diagnosed so late in the game for her, regular listeners know in 2008, the summer of 2008, my mom did all the testing to donate a kidney to my dad and was rejected to be a donor because of cognitive impairment. So I thought, okay, hallelujah, finally, she's been diagnosed. We can stop pretending that this is normal. Right. Because she never admitted she had a problem. She, she doesn't really admit it now, but it's, she okay. does tell me sometimes my brain doesn't work so well, which is kind of hysterical when she says that. It's like, yeah, you think? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's um, only 50%, like Tipa says, only 50% know that they have brain change. And it's easier when you're dealing with someone who knows that they have brain change. My mom, like your mom, didn't know she had brain change until she was medicated with cannabis and she would hear herself say things and then like laugh about it because she would be like, oh my gosh, that makes no sense at all. Oh, I wish my mom could do that. My mom is at very advanced stages now. Okay. And when I was with her on Monday, she's chatting, blah, blah, blah. You can, uh, well, it's, it was an Instagram story, so it's gone now. But she's talking, and it, if you don't know anything about her, it all makes sense. Except yeah, totally none of it made cool. sense in context. Right. It was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's just like, I just sit there, kind of nod and agree. and. Yeah you know what else is there to do and then as soon as she kind of goes she'll say something like she'll pause and say well and i know right away she's about to ask me what have i been up to and she has no clue who i am so when i answer sometimes i get like a dismissive hand wave like oh please <laughs> <laughs> like that makes no sense you don't do those things <laughs> so well, she knows that you're someone that she loves you're, she knows that you uh, love her. Mm -hmm. So that's... I work very hard to give her enjoyable outings when, we, when I visit on Mondays. Yes. The kids are all back in school now, so it makes it a little harder. I, I do make the joke that we're kind of creepers because we like to watch children. We really like to watch children at the pool. So it just, <laughs> <laughs> she just likes to watch the little kids and their moms doing stuff, just, it, you could tell it gives her, you know, warm, fuzzy feeling. Absolutely. And warm. I know from my, my research that that's, that's what she's going to remember is that feeling. So I'm, right now we're dealing with, um, she, we thought she had a bladder infection mm -hmm. and she doesn't, we had to go do an ultrasound, mm -hmm. kind of traumatic. Now we have to do a CT scan. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Um, but cannabis, uh, it, there's recent research that shows that cannabis helps with strep, staph, and MRSA. So I would think that a regular, um, for people not living in a nursing home, regular administration of cannabis would help a lot of things that are not necessarily verbalized. That's interesting. So now tell me how you, besides helping your mom, how did you, you obviously did more research into this. Yes, excuse me. I should have had this ready. Time out. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. That is a very large binder. It is a very large binder. So 
um, I was scheduled, we were scheduled to go to Sacramento with the Alzheimer's Association to lobby our Congress members. And um, in preparation for that, in January, I started to assemble all of the studies that show how cannabis helps dementia. Oh my goodness. So for people who are just listening, and I'm going to plug the brand new YouTube channel. That looks like a three inch binder with yeah. about what? Three or 400 pages of information. Yeah. Well, these are only the um, abstracts oh. of studies. So if I actually printed out all of the studies, I could, it would be tall enough for me to sit on. So that is impressive. Um, so yeah, I was very lucky to be connected with people who have um, a print shop basically. Um, and I was able to print all these studies out on their, uh, through their sponsorship basically. Um, and because you can say to people all day long, oh, there are tons of studies, there's tons of studies. And they always come back to you and say, oh no, we need more studies, we need more studies. And that might be true for something like cancer. Um, or the MRSA thing, or the staff thing, or the strep thing, because there are other options for those things. There are no other options for people living with dementia. That is very true. And the medical establishment takes 25 years to adapt, to adopt new information into their regular practice. 25 I'm in trouble. <laughs> 25 years is far too long for people living with dementia and their families to wait for, for this protocol, for this to come online. And like I was saying earlier, 33 of 36 states have Alzheimer's or other neurological illnesses on their list of tyranny, their qualifying conditions list. So if, if your state doesn't have it on it, start lobbying your elected officials that other states have it. You know, at least 15 have Alzheimer's specifically on their list. The others have other neurodegenerative diseases or Huntington's or Parkinson's or MS. Um, so we know that cannabis is really great for the brain. Our body has a system in it that is not taught in most medical schools, the endocannabinoid system is the system that affects all other systems of the body. I would think that's a pretty important system for doctors to know about. It's, yeah. like, it's as though they don't know about the nervous system. It's that important. So I am hoping that more medical schools are going to start teaching the endocannabinoid system. Because we have this endocannabinoid system, we make endocannabinoids in our bodies. Um, one is called anandamide and the other is 2-AG. Those are endogenous endocannabinoids. And the others are phytocannabinoids, which you get from cannabis. You can also tone your endocannabinoid system with leafy greens of all kinds regular exercise, quality sleep, singing, dancing. It's similar to endorphins, but it's not endorphins. That's very interesting. Yes. Cuz they do tell you they've, they've kind of backed up a big step with Alzheimer's prevention or cure since they can't find one of those is now they're talking about lifestyle choices and you know it always comes down to what you eat and how much you exercise. <laughs> so, yes. um there's no shortcut to good health. That is true. Um, I know. You have to eat vegetables and lots of them. You have to not eat sugar. You have to not have alcohol. You can't do things that inflame your systems and expect to have efficient systems. So since there is no cure on the horizon, since cannabis is still on the schedule one of drugs federally and cannot actually be studied well in the United States, <clears throat> additionally, when there are studies in the United States, there's currently only one provider of study drug, but that is literally going through the courts right now. That could change soon, or it may not, but there's only one provider of study drug. That's the University of Mississippi. They grow the poorest quality cannabis 
possible. They obviously do not care at all. They just throw it in the ground and that's it. And <laughs> what happens? Um, and when they provide the study drug to researchers, they throw it all into a hopper, grind it all up, seeds, stems, leaves, and flour, all in one, and then ship it out to be studied. So it makes perfect sense that those with anecdotal stories of flour that they buy at a dispensary, like say in California, where it's you know regulated in most cases, um, we still have an unregulated market, but in most cases, people will buy from the regulated shops, a tincture or flour. There's so much more medicine in this product than in the product provided by the University of Mississippi. So <clears throat> when people say, oh, you know, there's no studies, in a way they're right that there's no studies because there's no studies with the flour that people are actually buying. But there is a lot of anecdotal evidence. There are multiple facilities in Northern California using cannabis medicine, full flower cannabis medicine. Most of them use a one-to-one -one preparation. And what is meant by that, it's CBD to THC. Oh, I'm sure a lot of your listeners uh, have heard about CBD. It's all the rage now. <laughs> Uh, CBD can be helpful for a lot of people. It's great for anxiety and insomnia. Uh, doctors are saying, though, that people living with brain change and dementia really need a bit of THC in their medicine. Um, this, so back to the endocannabinoid system, uh, there are two different receptors within the endocannabinoid system, CB1 and CB2. THC the psychoactive component of cannabis is a lock with CB1 receptors, and CB1 receptors are in the brain. Ah. Very few in the rest of the body. CB2 receptors are throughout the whole body, very few in the brain. Interesting. Very interesting. So the CBD uh, really works very, very well on... Uh, pain without throughout the body like your mom might be in pain that she's not able to express and if she takes CBD it'll help relieve that pain and she might have a more pleasant day um, THC for my mom was super important because my mom was really really agitated and CB uh, sorry THC works very very well with agitation in people living with dementia in my book my favorite <laughs> article um, this one by Dr. Ethan Russo uh, in Frontiers in Integrative Neuroscience called Cannabis Therapeutics and the Future of Neurology has a section specifically, it talks about all the different things, cannabis and epilepsy, cannabis and brain tumors, cannabis and Alzheimer's disease is of course my favorite part and it's the longest in the article and um, it specifically tells you which um, elements work with which so like agitation is helped by THC CBD and the terpene linalool anxiety CBD THC in low doses and linalool um, so you can check that out uh, all yeah, the that different does, that doesn't look like an easy read <laughs> it's a really easy read it oh is it good. yeah okay, it, I wrote it down it's not, um, you know, there's some jargon, but I mean, I would think that people listening have read the 36 hour day and are doing some research and are listening to some stuff and anything that's too complicated, I just skip right over. You know, if it's too doctory or sciencey, I just skip right over that. I go, okay, that brain chemical, whatever it's called, okay, that brain chemical, I just submit, uh, you know, substitute for what I need. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I'm not a social worker. I don't have any letters after my name. I professionally, I do props and set dressing. So I have a lot of research experience and that's how I came upon this knowledge. I just did the research. All of this is easily findable in PubMed. Um, is that a website? Yeah, PubMed is where all the doctors post all their um, studies and their um, abstracts. So PubMed, if you type in, you know, cannabis and dementia, you'll get a bunch of studies that'll come back. Um, 
On my website at alsnotes.com, you can find links to pretty much all the studies in this book that I have here. Um, you can also find a lot of links and information at a website called projectcbd.org. That's a really great resource. Um, I also highly recommend, if, no, if people haven't read it yet, The 36-Hour Day. I and that one. Right, good. And back to uh, prevention and what we can do. There's a great book called The End of Alzheimer's by Dr. Dale Bredesen that came yep. out. I got that one too. <laughs> I love it. I listened to it on our road trip when, uh, when we met, you and I. So and you drove all the way from Southern California to the little tiny Brentwood to see Tipa yeah. Snow. Yes, I actually went to Santa Rosa first to see Tipa Snow there. And then I went to little tiny Brentwood to see Tipa Snow. And we actually got an interview with Tipa Snow. And she was talking about how cannabis helps dementia. Awesome. So soon we'll have that posted on alsnotes.com. Um, if anybody wants more information um, on top of that, they can go to edcan.tv. Uh, that's where we post all of the videos that we run around collecting uh, of doctors talking about how cannabis helps dementia. So, so that's EDCAN TV? EDCAN.TV, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's where the longer format ones are. I try to post the shorter versions on Al's Notes, uh, but the full format um, talks by doctors are at EDCAN.TV. Oh, good. More things for me to watch <laughs> and listen <Yeah>. to. So <laughs> the nice thing about these things is that these things will help today. Cannabis will help even your mom where she is today. Is she in a nursing home or assisted living? She's in a memory care residence. So it's more assisted living, not. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's mem yeah, it's the whole community is assisted living, but then they have the memory care that's, you know, the lock in. So that's awesome um, because assisted livings in California do have a protocol to use cannabis medicine. Mm. There's a great uh, facility in Santa Rosa that has been using full flower cannabis medicine for 15 years for people living with dementia. It's called Primrose. Okay. And they don't smoke it. It's um, oils and edibles that, that they administer to their patients. There's protocols that are available um, if the assisted living wants to ask Primrose, or there's another one in Petaluma, I don't know the name, uh, but I will soon, so I'd be happy to give you that information in the future. But it's totally doable in assisted livings. It is not doable in nursing homes currently, which is, to me, unconscionable because these people are the ones on their way out. Yeah. It's um, not like marijuana is going to kill you. It really isn't. We know that for an absolute fact. Um, the there is a um, assembly bill moving through, I believe, uh, I believe it's 305 uh, in California that will guarantee medical cannabis access to people wherever they are if they are in hospice within six months of their death, which it's crazy that you have to wait for the right medicine to six months before you're dying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, um, they give you all these pharmaceuticals that can kill you or cause all these other problems. I started to say when my mom was diagnosed, I don't think she's ever, I know she's never been on any of the antipsychotics or any of that stuff. She's never been hostile or, I mean, she's probably anxious. I'd be anxious, but, um, you know, my dad before he passed away was on, I don't know, like 20 or 30 drugs. Mm. And it was like, you don't even know what this cocktail is doing to you. <laughs> yeah, polypharmacy in people living with dementia and older people is a real problem. And cannabis is beautiful because it, it, it's such a complex plant. We obviously don't know everything that it can do, but we do know it does lots of good stuff. It's really great for the brain. The brain loves cannabis. And maybe the reason they haven't found any progress with Alzheimer's and dementia is because the brain is so complex. But since we know cannabis isn't going to kill you, why aren't we loudly from every rooftop shouting that people living with dementia should try this as a first line medicine? Yeah, because so, I would assume if you started it when maybe before you even admitted to yourself, but you were suspecting you had a problem. Like I have a friend at the gym 
used to know all the second cousins, like the the little kid, teenager cousins in her family. She's older than I am. Mm-hmm. All their names. Mm-hmm. And now she doesn't remember all their names. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have the typical um, memory loss that affects daily living. But not remembering people's names that you did remember a couple years ago, to me, that's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. Like in Dale Bredesen's book, he says, get a cognoscopy. Get get your baseline cognoscopy early on, like in your 40s, so that you know where you're starting. So that, you know, what might be considered on their scale as memory loss may be like severe memory loss for you. So it's important to know where you are. Um, speaking of what you were just saying, in this article, um, the reduced amyloid beta plaque formation is one of the benefits of cannabis. Um, and THCA is the acid form, the raw form of cannabis. So THCA does not make you high. If you have access to the leaves, throw the leaves in your smoothie or in a salad and eat the leaves because that's good for you. Hmm. Um, so you can reduce amyloid beta plaque formation by taking it as a preventative, I believe, and I am counting on it. Well, now so, I'm like getting yeah. a little bit more intrigued because as the regular listeners know, my mom has early onset or younger onset Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Her mom either had undiagnosed Alzheimer's or brain deterioration from a um, aneurysm that leaked for three months before they fixed it. And my maternal great-grandmother also had senile dementia. That's what they called it back in the day. Um, She passed away before I was born. So I just know of her issues from family stories. So that's not really a great family history. Yeah. Um, I do take after my dad more. And my dad's side of the family has a lot of diabetes. Okay. All men. Okay. So many years ago, I finally, well, I had a client that said, well, you're overweight you have a family history of diabetes, you're screwed. Well, pff, those were fighting words. <laughs> so I, it took a long time and a lot of effort to find what worked. I lost 100 pounds. I kept 90 of it off for like three years until I hit 50. Now I got to lose another 20 again, which is really frustrating. But Really, you know how to do it. You know how it's done. I have a great acupuncturist in LA. If you ever come my way, he, he treats with diet. But really, have you considered... Um, seeing one of Dr. Bredesen's trained doctors, um, there's a lady I know in LA here who does virtual counseling as well, Dr. Anna Lee something. Um, but speaking of senile dementia, I was recently reading in, do- in Dr. Todd McCaria's book um, of the research done before prohibition about senile dementia. And in 1890, they knew that cannabis helps dementia. Huh. 1890, so, yeah. that's over 100 years ago. Oh, yeah, that's what they were using for senile dementia, and it was the best medicine for senile dementia and agitation in senile dementia. So in 1906, when they started phasing cannabis out of medicine, and then in 1937, when the tax sta- uh, when the, um, the Marijuana Tax Stamp Act was passed, which really basically made it illegal and unaffordable for doctors to keep prescribing, Cannabis left the American pharmacopoeia. Hmm. Um, Plants are not profitable in the system that has been designed and is what we have today. So they need to change the system, which systems don't like changing. And I don't care about the system. I don't care. I'm not a capitalist. I don't, I'm not invested in these people. I don't care. All I want are people living with dementia to have a better life and I want their families and their loved ones to have a better life too. So to me, I'm just shouting from every rooftop and saying to anyone who will listen, cannabis helps dementia. Start now, prevent it, um, do Dr. Bredesen's protocol. His protocol is great. It's a keto flex 12-3 diet, which is fantastic. Um, 12 hours, 12 to 14 or 16 hours of fasting between dinner and breakfast three hours of fasting between dinner and bedtime. These are doable things. And his diet will prevent diabetes and heart disease and obesity and all these other illnesses. So why not do what he's saying, you know? I have a friend at the gym, different friend than the one that's concerned about her mind. 
she is on the waiting list for one of his um, trained doctors uh -huh. here in the Bay Area. And I don't know if it's UCSF or UC Davis or awesome. we're in the kind of a triangle of research yes. universities, which is really, really fantastic. But I haven't, I haven't gotten on that waiting list. I probably should do that. But you, I to, you can start now. You do it yourself. That's <laughs> true. I've read the book, but yeah. I didn't all the blood work. I got to that point and it was like, oh, hmm. That's okay. It's easy. I'll send you a link to um, Dr. Anna Lee's virtual thing. There's no wait list. Just do it. You know, I mean, I know $1,300 is $1,300, but, you know, it's your mind. Yeah. Certainly $1,300 is only like a few days worth of care in a memory care facility. That is true. That's about a week and a half because my mom is about $5,700. Yeah. So, that's, that's, and that's every month. That's every single month. So you can prevent it. And plus she has to live with dementia. Yeah. Push it off as long as humanly possible. And um, Dr. Bredesen's book, there are 36 confounding factors they're all measurable there's no reason why we can't be working on these things i agree now your mom's still with you right oh no she passed february 1st oh okay i'm sorry about that it's okay i made this book i was making it in january um and my mom was um discontinued food water and other meds on january 27th and um, I said to her, Mom, I am going to Sacramento on the 4th of February so that I can lobby on the 5th. I want you with me. And she passed on the 1st, enough time for me able to chill out a couple minutes before we had to drive up north. Um, and here she is on the cover um, <laughs> enjoying life because, you know, my mom... I wish I had pictures of her not enjoying life and being all agitated, but you never take pictures of people when they're in that position. Um, when she was medicated, these are all pictures of my mom medicated, and you can see the top right corner one. You see the shake where she's coloring and the shake in the background there. That's her coconut milk-based shake uh, that really, really helped a lot. So coconut milk you should we should talk about also. Um, so I read uh, Dr. Mary Newport's book, um, Alzheimer's Disease, What If There Is a Cure and Nobody Knew. And Dr. Mary Newport, um, she's, she's looking for the book. Uh. Looking for the book, it's true. So, sorry, time out. There it is. Dr. Newport's book, um, her husband had uh, early onset Alzheimer's, and Dr. Newport is a NICU doctor, and she was looking for clinical trials for her husband, and um, stumbled upon uh, the clinical trial for this medium-chain triglyceride-based medication. And she just ran out and bought coconut oil, because she knew that 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 medium chain triglycerides are in coconut oil. So she gave that to him and he tested too high to get into the trial. <laughs> and the day, two days before, he tested too low to get into the trial. So she needed so, to cut it in half. <laughs> so fine, whatever. I'm just going to give you coconut oil. And she did for years and they had a really decent life together until he passed. Um, and my mom, I tried it on my mom. Yes, it can give you a little bit of a stomach upset when you first come on to it but um in our case my mom had a little trouble in the you know bowel movement department anyway so i'm like whatever let's just try it and i was the one handling that process so we tried it and she didn't have um, a negative reaction to the coconut oil coming on uh, monday we did it breakfast lunch dinner tuesday breakfast lunch during uh, at right after lunch we were watching a sitcom in the living room, and in one scene, they set up the joke. Two scenes later was the punchline, and she laughed at the punchline of the joke. And I just about fell out of my chair. And she said, turns to me, and she says, Chella, you know, I feel different. I feel better. Wow. And wide open. Because she hadn't spoken in full sentences in a long time. 
And I said, wow, mom, that's amazing because we're trying a new therapy on you. And she said, really, what is it? And I told her and she's like, how'd you learn about it? I was just like amazed at all this, all of this. And I'm like, oh, I read it in this book. She's like, show me the book. So I bring her the book and I hand her the book. And she sat there and she read the book for two hours. Wow. And retained the information for like a year and a half. It was amazing. And so she dutifully took her shakes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, until one day she turned to me right when she was granted um, to get into this facility that we waited years to get her into because it's a really nice one. It takes Medicare and Medi-Cal. And anyway, um, right before she got in, she looked at me and she said, babe, I, I can't take another shake. I just can't. And so I'm like, okay, it is what it is. And I tried a different supplement, and which they've since gone out of business. And um, she deteriorated pretty quick after that. She wasn't able to speak in full sentences, and then she wasn't really able to speak. And eventually she didn't remember who I was, which was actually a really huge relief because my mom had so much anxiety when I wasn't around. It was, where's Cella? 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 Every two seconds, where's Cella? And when she forgot who I was, it wasn't, where's Cella, where's Cella? But when she saw me, it was always, oh, hi, I know you, person that I know and love. <laughs> you know, but it wasn't, oh, my God, where's that person that I know and love? It wasn't that anymore. So that, to me, was a great blessing. I saw the great blessing in her forgetting who I was. I said, I don't remember, I think my mom forgot me over stages. Cause it wasn't dramatic. Mm -hmm. And there's times when she seems to remember a little better but half the time she doesn't remember how many daughters she has there's two of us right. not that complicated oh, sure. and then, like she'll say yeah. i have one daughter and two brothers no you have one sister and two brothers but whatever <laughs> have you talked to other families that have tried this therapy yes so we are making a documentary um that's, that's you were telling me that that sounds like <laughs> crazy fun <laughs> It's really amazing. I'm making a docu We're making a documentary about how cannabis helps dementia. Um, for the most part, we have gathered interviews so far, uh, primarily from doctors and clinicians. However, uh, we do uh, we did interview Gary Beal and his wife Becky. His wife is living with frontotemporal dementia. She was very aggressive. Um, very and not in life, but when she uh, got sick, she became very, very aggressive and psychotic. And when they started her on cannabis medicine, that all went away and it lifted. And um, while she still has dementia, she's calm and happy and is able to enjoy her time with her husband. And her husband's able to enjoy her and play music with her and enjoy her again. Um, and whereas before, she wasn't able to do that. Um, and she's pretty near the end, actually. Um, you'll see when, when we release that interview. I also have two other friends in Southern California here who are using full flower cannabis medicine. One lady who is living with dementia at home alone. Oh, wow. I'm her medical power of attorney. It's a little nerve wracking, but she really doesn't want to leave her home. And I get it. And, um, she's pretty safe in the home. For now, she did flood the house the other day. Oh dear! Uh, by letting the water run, uh, but she doesn't cook and she doesn't wander and um, she really doesn't want to move to a facility. So I'm trying to respect her dignity, especially after my mom's uh, stint in the facility was such a nightmare. I totally understand um, that people want to stay where they want to stay. So Carolyn, um, after learning the protocol that the doctors are using up north, after doing these interviews with them, we learned that they're using in facilities one-to-one -one CBD to THC, 10 milligrams, two to three times a day. So uh, Carolyn has a one-to-one -one cannabis oil that I put in capsules for her, that I put in her medicine um, organizer where she's supposed to have it she has it most of the time and if you didn't know her you would not think she has dementia That's when really interesting yeah uh, when she's when the home uh, when her long-term care insurance 
nurse came to meet her. She was like, really? She, has, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's? Yeah, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And obviously her medicine is too darn good <laughs> that she does too well in social chit-chat. Um, she does really, really well um, on this medicine. It's really a blessing. Uh, the other lady, um, she is 96 and um, has not been diagnosed with a specific type of dementia. Her family just calls it senile dementia, <laughs> um, which is fine, whatever. Um, but she is aggressive. She's always been aggressive um, and mean mm -hmm. and now meaner because in my ex limited experience, dementia just makes you extra of what you were before. So she's meaner than she was before. Um, and we were having a little trouble getting her dose right. And after I did these interviews with these doctors, I mentioned it to my friend who, it's her mother, uh, and she increased her dose uh, to 10 milligrams, which was still not enough. She was still really mean. Uh, and now she is on 45 milligrams divided in two, so twice a day. So she has like 22 milligrams in the morning and 23 milligrams at night or in the afternoon. And that just keeps her happy and regulated and not mean, you know? Yeah. Well, we had an incident where my mom lives. Mm -hmm. A gentleman freaked out because he couldn't get a hold of his wife, mm -hmm. knocked over another resident mm -hmm. whose hip got broken. Oh, God. Oh, it got worse. Because Did the guy like... 50 him? Um, I'm not sure what happened with him. Okay. It's a little interesting... I know all of the details because I know all of the people involved. Right. The gentleman that got knocked over passed away four days later. Wow. So the gentleman that freaked out is no longer in the same community with my mom. Of course. Which, okay, I don't have to worry about my mom, but I also know the situation with his wife and he was in a different community before, and they should never have taken him. They couldn't handle him. He used to be an ultra marathoner. Oh, because, wow. Because this gal is really super private. And so he needed, he needed like a dementia village where he could roam and be outside and whatever. Yeah, but how many of those are there? In the United States, there are zero. Well, actually, there's one in San Luis Obispo. Is there really? Oh, I'm going down there. <laughs> so my husband and I's long-term goal is to open a string of plant-based assisted livings for people living with dementia. Uh, we want to incorporate Dr. Bredesen's protocol and cannabis medicine. I think that is aces. And the, the village concept would be fantastic. But that's my, my theory, and I'll throw it out there for you, maybe I'll have to get involved with that, um, is you have the village, and then like next to it would be a preschool, elementary school, so th yep. that the kids could then go to the village and have their secondary grandparents because that's yep. so beneficial to all three generations, even the parents that are not with the kids or, the, or their parents. Absolutely. And you could have support groups and other like, activities is not necessarily the right word yeah, at the village so that it's not some scary institutional place 100 percent. my mom went to an intergenerational day program called one generation here in la and it's award-winning it's incredible and that's exactly what it is so yes the intergenerational thing is such an important part of it like you say so it's not this scary horrible like institution facility you know mm -hmm. these are people living with dementia they're still in there mm -hmm. still people living with dementia so we should treat them as such. Even people with no means, even people on Medi-Cal, on Medicaid, should, they're still people, you yeah. know? At my mom's nursing home, which was a Medicaid nursing home, there are eight to 13 people living with dementia for every one CNA. Ew, that's a little, that's a little, 13 is too many, eight might be doable. Mm, not if you have to take someone to the bathroom every two hours and then wait 20 or 30 minutes for them to maybe use the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, if that's the standard of care that you check every two hours, 
But checking really means bringing them to the bathroom, encouraging them to use the bathroom, and then washing up and going back to the activity. But that takes quite a long time with somebody living with dementia. That is true. Not just a snap to thing. I think um, we're planning on starting our assisted living um, with one house with eight people. And then maybe then there's another house and then another house and another house. Um, and eventually, if we're super successful, maybe we'll get funding to make another village, an intergenerational village. So ideally, we're all moving in this direction. You are educating and uh, informing people um, of how to live better with dementia. Um, prevention is so important, eating right, exercise. And as, as we know, uh, dementia disproportionately impacts women. And I believe it's because of menopause and hormonal changes that happen during our change. And if we aren't well supported during the change, we have a much higher incidence of developing dementia pretty quick after that. Yeah, I think my mom started showing signs. She was on hormone replacement therapy. It significantly exasperated the hormonal headaches she got. They went from headaches to migraines. Uh -huh. And which, by the way, cannabis is great for the. Oh, okay. I want to keep that in mind because I still get those occasionally. Not the well, no, occasionally they're migraines. Mm -hmm. Um, she finally said, you know, they were adjusting the levels and blah 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 blah. And she, this is my mom, she said, I'm done with this, chucked the hormone replacement in the trash, and I do not want to tell you what mental cliff she went on. I mean, it was just. <sighs> Every yeah. it bad... Might been, it might have been the brain changes that also helped encourage her to chuck the... Thing. Yeah, because as and I tell this story, and i got to find a new one, but she, we had a photography business together, and she would take orders from clients and not write down directions, due dates, any useful information that would make it easy for somebody else to do it. And it's easy to just say, oh, well, she thought she'd take care of it, got sidetracked, whatever. It was very easy to dismiss... But when you look back over, let's see, my daughter was two and a half and she's 27, so 25 years. Mm. And you start saying, okay, I think that was the start. And she's the same age I am now, 52 and a half. And then you, you know, and you keep looking forward. Yeah. You know, there, and I was just thinking about this because she would do a lot of housekeeping at the studio. Mm. She'd sweep the leaves off the front walk and then, she actually waited until it was quieter, at more at the end of the day. She would start orders about the time I was ready to head home. And I lived about 30 minutes away. She lived like three. Oh, and yeah. it was so frustrating. It's like, I have a kid. I need to go home, make dinner. Da, 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 da. Why are you starting on this stuff now? You know, we lived in a very safe city, but I always felt guilty leaving her there working. And I'm wondering if there was a reason that she waited till it was quieter yeah. and less people, you know, less employees. Sure. You know, when I like, it's very easy to look back and go, hmm, yeah, I think that might have been something a sign or whatever. Absolutely. My mom um, repeated stories. Yes, we all are these great forensic detectives, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Hindsight is definitely 2020. Um, I just read, because we were talking about prevention, I just read an article where they were talking about uh, sleep changes mm -hmm. in middle age, later middle age, could actually be an indication of potential dementia, Alzheimer's. Which thought, happened during menopause, by the way. And some it was a total symptom of menopause. That's probably why women are more susceptible to dementia. Well, now I'm worried about a friend because she has insomnia really bad. But well, you know what's good for that? She does. There, <laughs> I'm. La I was laughing earlier because one of the gentlemen in our cycle club, I was having a very frustrating, horrible day, and I was supposed to be organizing this ride, and it just everything went off the rails. Flat tires, late, just oh. bad. And he's like, I'm just, blah, 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 blah. and he's looking at me like. Do you need a joint? I got tons of it at home. And I'm like, okay, uh, Mr. Conservative, we can kiss where are we going with the political sway on that guy? 
And I was just like, no, 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 I'm fine. Because one. Cannabis crosses all political. Apparently, because he was like. Oklahoma has the number one medical cannabis law in the country. And the fastest growing market. Second only to Florida. <laughs> Florida. I don't know about that state. <laughs> I'm telling you, they will be much better off when they're all using cannabis. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, it turns out that he had given, a fr the gal that has insomnia, she, he had given her some edibles that she froze for when she needed them. And then they were talking about the tincture and the blah, blah. I'm like, huh. It okay. was better because edibles all, almost always have sugar, and sugar is not the brain's friend. Um, tincture is much easier to control. Tincture is more regulated. Tincture is, um, tincture is way more medicinally effective than an edible. Well, so she, she yeah. had both. Yeah. So I, I thought that was very interesting because her mom did all the right things, ate right, exercised, blah, 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 ended up with either Alzheimer's or dementia. Now she did have 10 kids. So I don't know that stress is not. My theory is that when you birth children, you pass part of your brain onto them. So that could have been something. I'm going to have to tell my daughter that I only have one. So I guess I'm okay. Yeah. I didn't have children. Nope. 50% better than my mom. So, okay. Exactly. Um, that's very interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to these links and the links that, yeah. Tella and I have talked about will be in the show notes. So you guys can click through and read them too. Absolutely. Um, my mom, all the way to the very end, till her dying day, uh, cannabis was very beneficial for her. Um, in my research book, of course, in amassing it, I discovered that uh, a, a study that showed that CBD makes morphine work better. So in her final days, she was, of course, on a lot of morphine like everybody is. And she was developing a death rattle, really, really bad death rattle. We learned later that, of course, she died of aspiration pneumonia, which is why she had such a bad death rattle. Um, but I remembered that CBD helps dementia. I mean, that helps um, morphine work better. So I dropped three drops between her lip and her gum, and I just rubbed it in, and that death rattle just turned into just the ebb and flow of the ocean. And I did it every hour on the hour because when I fell asleep in the middle of the night and didn't set an alarm, the death rattle came right back. Interesting. So I set an alarm for every hour for the next four days until she died. And she was just calm. Her breathing was calm and even, and it was a very peaceful and beautiful passing. So I was, we were very lucky. And I really do attribute it to cannabis. Interesting. Well, I'm going to do a little bit more research. Yeah. Fortunately, the town of Brentwood, a little bit conservative. Or okay. well, they decided, no, we're not going to have dispensaries in town because bad. For now, you know that people sue to change that and it gets changed. Well, we're going to have to fight an urban limit line adjustment here. So maybe 2024, 2022, all those years are rapidly approaching <laughs> well 2020 is going to be the year of cannabis it's um already in congress there are more bills uh that are about cannabis than ever before um you know it, it's not just brentwood though 80 percent of california is illegal california you know That's the cannabis state. yeah 80. yeah meanwhile um our governor is very into uh, fighting dementia and Alzheimer's disease and I need to have a meeting with him to let him know that cannabis helps dementia because all of those um, raids that are taking all the illegal unpermitted grows uh, don't have to be put in the chipper they could test those and give them to veterans to homeless people to people living with dementia there is use for this medicine they do not have to throw it away that makes sense and we were at that advocacy day together. I was there that day too. Oh, awesome. So there was a lot of us there. You know that the keynote speaker 
Steve, the Kickmaster. Mm -hmm. I went up to him after I was wearing these earrings, I went, uh, which are big, beautiful, gold, vintage cannabis leaf earrings, for those uh -huh. of you not watching. Yeah. Um, I went up to him after, and I was like, wow, your speech was so in, uh, inspiring. You're doing so great. It's so exciting. Hey, did you know that cannabis helps dementia? And he said, oh, yeah, I take it every day. Huh. And I said, and you didn't want to share that with the group? And yeah, he, said, he definitely should have said that. I, he said very specifically, oh, no, I wanted to be invited back. The yeah. Alzheimer's Association is vehemently against cannabis medicine. Hmm. They testified before the FDA that there is no tests that show that cannabis helps dementia. Comes that three-inch binder again. <laughs> um, so I love the Alzheimer's Association. They do lots of great work, but they are funded by Big Pharma. Ugh. Big Pharma has not been... Um, has not been able to figure out how to make money on cannabis yet. So God bless them. They are working against us in this regard. And um, that needs to change. And I'm hoping to get them on board with the whole idea that cannabis helps dementia. That could be something that could take till 2024. Yeah, well, I have a grandmother that's 101, wow. almost 101 and a half. Wow. And the only thing wrong with her is she's mostly blind from glaucoma and ornery, but eh. At this point, at 101, she's entitled. <laughs> Get her some one-to-one -one cannabis oil and just give her a few drops. You'll see a remarkable change. In her eyesight? In her demeanor. In oh. In how she feels, in her attitude, in, in how she is. If you don't want to try one-to-one, -one, get her some high-quality CBD. I'd have to try that. I'm telling you. It's really, really remarkable because I'm sure she's suffering from aches and pains and doesn't want to take pills and, you know, that generation. Get yeah. her some CBD or put it on a cookie for her. I always recommend tincture because you can uh, put tincture in anything. And also, if you can get someone to do it the proper way under the tongue, that is the most bioavailable of that. Um, uh, Isn't that kind of nasty tasting? It's a little nasty tasting. Some taste better than others. There are some that have no flavor or little flavor or have a different flavor added to it. Um, some are mint and things like that. Um, you know, it depends what's going on with the person and what they want to do and what they want to achieve. Now, this is a slightly side note. Is CBD, does that help with inflammation? It does. Because yes. my daughter has Crohn's disease. Oh, cannabis is great for one to one is great for Crohn's disease. Okay, so go to the projectcbd.org website that I told you. All right, I'll put a star next to that one on my notes. Type in Crohn's disease in the search bar, and they will uh, return many, many stories. Interesting. Patent. Patent. Oh yeah, um, the patent. Uh, the United States Department of Health has held a patent. Patent number 6630507B1 that is specifically for ischemic insults like stroke and trauma and protection against neurodegeneration uh, and diseases like Alzheimer's and Huntington's. That's the United States Department of Health holds that patent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told you 33 state departments of health have it on their list of tyranny. So. Um, yes, cannabis fights uh, inflammation. Interesting. But have, definitely check that out. You have to also stop creating inflammation to get the best uh, results. So doing that Keto Flex 12-3 diet on top of cannabis should really reverse pretty much 70% of disease. The, the diet part might be the challenge with her, but we'll see. So she want to feel better. Well, she's on a infused medication every six weeks, so that Has she read the side effect profile and what that's some doing of it. In her body. She needs to know what she's taking. She yeah, they took her off the stuff that is bad for your liver because she was starting to show signs that the liver might be affected. Cannabis yeah. has zero effect on on the organs. Zero negative effect. Zero negative effect. So I hope that she will do the research 
and titrate off of the garbage medicine that is killing her and onto medicine that won't kill her. If she would like to find a cannabis doctor that is skilled in cannabis medicine, she can find one at the Society of Cannabis Clinicians website. Um, and that website is cannaclinicians.org. This has been super fascinating. <laughs> I think I spelled that wrong, but uh, I know how to spell it when I'm typing it. C A N N A, Canna Clinicians, C L I N I C I A N S dot O R G. Oh, nope, I got it right. That will be, that's, yeah, because my one concern for her is that she started on the infused medicine at 24 ish. She graduated from college five years ago. Yeah, so about four and a half, about, yeah, about four, a little less than four years ago. They, you know, it's, she goes to the infusion clinic where the cancer patients get their poisons that help, help cure cancer, I think. No, just poisons them more. Cannabis cures cancer. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I have seen. But you play one on TV? I've seen, but no, I teach doctors about cannabis. <laughs> I just find it, you know, like we have, a, you know, th four three by 16 foot garden boxes, mm -hmm. all organic. Mm -hmm. I make my own bread. Yes. My biggest no-no is my brain loves sugar and I know it's bad. So I'm, I've reduced the sugar in my eating tremendously. So it's, your gut. it's your gut. It's your gut that has taken over your brain. So you need to get into a gut rebalancing protocol. You're probably, if I were in your shoes, um, I would watch a great documentary called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. It'll really inspire you to do a vegetable fast, which will break all of your bad habits and rebalance your gut flora. Mm. In the article in Frontiers in Integrative Neuroscience that you're going to read, it also talks about how cannabis helps your gut microflora. So you got to rebalance your gut microbiome and that will allow your brain to not say, give me sugar now. <laughs> Fortunately, I've toned it way down. It's just <clears throat> the screaming at me. It kind of hints like, Hey, you know, nudge, nudge, maybe. And I'm like, no, nope, yeah. no, nope, we're not going there. Good, good. Well, get your gut uh, microbiome in order and you will be able to completely have total control of all of that. And you know, be in charge of your health journey. Cause that's really what we're talking about. Right. I Definitely. Mean, until the day you die. Well, and it's, th I wanted to talk to you because, you know, for people that are in the early stages or people like us that have a concern about possible memory loss as we age, you know, there's, there's gotta be more than just diet and nutrition, which, okay. I always talk about how important that is. And well, you have to be in the optimal ranges, like Dr. Bredesen talks about in his book. The normal range, like throughout my perimenopause journey, I was always in the normal range. So every time I went to my regular clinic doctor, she said, no, you're fine. You're in normal range. But I was not fine. I was not fine. <laughs> I was not fine. And they and, kept telling you you were. Oh, yes, which was crazy making. So I finally went to a holistic doctor and she said, oh, no, you're not fine. You're totally in perimenopause. That's why you're having all these things. You absolutely are not fine. You're in the basement of all these numbers. You're not in optimal range. You're in the low normal range, which is not normal. So I learned a lot through that journey. Um, like you know, find a functional medicine doctor if you can. <laughs> um, uh, and it right now is to find a dementia friendly doctor for my mom so that I don't end up killing somebody. Well, I think that you too will benefit from CBD. Actually a one-to-one -one would be really great for you also because of the, what we talked about sweeping away the amyloid beta plaques and all that it also helps through the change. It helps with insomnia. It helps with all the things. So go to the next city over that has a dispensary and get a I think I have to go all the way to Oakland. Okay. But <laughs> you know, there they have some really good dispensaries and some of the top uh, most uh, efficacious brands are uh, care by design, Mary's medicinals and um, Papa and Barkley. 
they all are very consistent and very good brands. Um, buy one of their tinctures. I, uh, Papa and Barkley has a really cool dual pack of a high CBD one that's a 30 to 1. And uh, the companion is a 1 to 30 that's very high in THC. So you can kind of figure out how much CBD you want and how much THC you want. So um, others are pre-made like 1 to 1, 8 to 1, 15 to 1, 30 to 1. Um, people who operate heavy machinery and things like that want a 30 to 1. CBD dominant. Um, people who are fighting insomnia and trying to normalize some numbers probably want something closer to 1 to 1. And smaller dosages maybe. So you, the thing about cannabis medicine is that you are the researcher. So you have to keep a notebook and it'd be nice to find a doctor who knows about cannabis medicine. Uh, you live in a, an area where you can get to a lot of doctors who know about cannabis medicine, but not everybody does. So no, I believe that. So they have to be their own researcher. And the nice thing to know is that after a millennia of humans using cannabis nobody has ever died from using cannabis and not even in all their scientific uh, studies of trying to kill animals with cannabis have they ever been able to kill an animal that's just fascinating because yeah. i've always always felt that western medicine is not the way to go you know if you get hit by a truck you know that's that's a great you know, option, Western medicine, you know, get you right in there and see what you can do for that trauma. But for chronic long-term issues, it's all diet, exercise, sleep, and stress. It's, and you got to find ways to manage those things and, and fix your balance within yourself. So, you know, it's complicated. You can't just look to a doctor to give you a pill to fix you. That's just not how it is. They're practicing medicine. You have to be involved in the practice as well. I mean, the six leading cause of death are doctors. God bless them. <laughs> you know? So um, they're practicing. And so I love that you have your garden and that you make your own bread. I mean, it's fantastic. So um, more power to you. And I know that you're going to lose that 20 pounds. You know, check out Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead and go on a vegetable juice fast. And you will probably just do it right then and there. Mm, that is definitely worth a try. I'm just... I am not the kind of person that likes the same thing. I had a, I had a little stomach tweakiness the last few days. I had scrambled eggs and rice mm -hmm. like three times in 48 hours. It's like no more. It's medicine. It, it was great. The first batch was like great. The second, I had one at lunch, one at dinner on Tuesday. And then we had it again Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I think so. And it was like Thursday night. I'm like, this still tastes good, but eh. I need yeah, something well, different. It's medicine. You know, your vegetable juice fast, you can use different vegetables. If you ever come down to LA, I'd love you to see my acupuncturist because really, really, like super dialed in, you get your organs diagnosed, your strongest to weakest organs, and then you know the vegetables that are really beneficial for you and the ones that you need to kind of avoid as much as possible. Well, I am coming to LA the Ooh. first week of October for oh. Work It. It's a women's podcasting conference. Oh, far out. So I can email you those dates and we can yeah. connect because probably don't want everybody to hear all those details. <laughs> right, right. But yes, definitely do. I'd love you to see Dr. Kim. I'd be happy to go with you on your first meeting and take notes for you uh, and ask the right questions because combining Dr. Kim's protocol with Dr. Bredesen's protocol and cannabis medicine, girl, <laughs> you're going to be the healthiest girl in all of Southern California. <laughs> so I'll live longer than my Nana. And yeah. not be, well, Henri is sort of a personality trait, but, <laughs> and I won't get glaucoma and all that bad stuff. That's right. You'll live really, great. really well. There's yeah. times when, well, she was, it was her 99th birthday when we buried my dad, mm. which was unfortunate. It was a military cemetery, so we didn't have a lot of options. Yeah. So that was kind of a bummer for her. And she, at that time, said, she was striving to live to 105, and I remember I was 50 and one quarter years. Yes. And I remember thinking, God, no, 55 yeah. more years. I'm so exhausted. Now, I don't feel that way now, 
Good. That was that was a rough three or four months, the beginning of 2017. Mm. Um, so, you know, she's she's slowed down, but she's she's still, you know, hey, 101. She's entitled to slow down a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. But um, get her on some cannabis medicine, and she'll feel better for whatever life she does have left. Convincing oh. her of that might be a challenge. <laughs> Show her the science. I'd have to read it to her. <laughs> yeah, read it to her. That's what I mean. You know, read her, read her uh, why it's good for her. You know? Well, it's definitely worth a shot. And then yeah. get her on it, get mom on it, and just. Or, oh, yeah. You know what? Um, well, she doesn't have dementia or anything. So, you know, that, that's all right. Anyway. You what can was he suggesting? That we should, you should play her, my interview with Dr. Russo. That's on my website at owlsnotes.com. Under plant-based education, you can find most of the good stuff. Okay. Well, I'll definitely check that out. I have some computer work to finish up this morning or this afternoon. And I know you got to leave shortly. So that's probably a good place to, to end because it sounds like we could talk about this for hours. We could. Anyway, yes, we could talk all day. Yes. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> well, I very much appreciate this and I'm going to check out all these links and they're all going to be in the show notes so everybody else can check them out. Perfect. And then hopefully we can hook up in October and meet again in person That'd be great. on your end of the state. Yes, that would be great. I'd love to see you again. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, you've made it to the end of yet another episode. I hope that you really enjoyed it. Also, be sure to follow me on social media if you're not already. Facebook is Fady Memories Podcast. Instagram is at Alzheimer's Podcast. I hope you guys check me out and I look forward to seeing you online. And as always, I'll be in your ears again next Tuesday.